All right, what is up guys? My first ever review of a Frame Arms Girl kit. This is the Kotobukiya Frame Arms Girl Stylet AIS color version. So, man, all I gotta say is wow, 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 wow. This kit not only looks good, but this, I was just really amazed. It's so good. These kits are really good. I mean, all the time I've been hearing like while reviewing the other uh, Bandai girl kits, the Super Fumina and things like that, all the comments, people are always saying like, oh, it's nothing compared to how good the Frame Arms girls kits are, and I always thought like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sure they're probably right, but I mean, how good can the Frame Arms girls kits be, but man, my first experience with this kit, really, well, I'm really impressed, these kits are super nice, and I'm really looking forward to getting some more now, because <laughs> I just really enjoyed this, it's so good, and I gotta say, I haven't built that many Kotobukiya kits, say just a few, three or four maybe. Uh, but this is definitely the best Kotobukiya kit that I've built as well. Uh, just because other Kotobukiya kits, you have like some finicky parts. I mean, the parts are really nicely molded, the detail and everything. Like, is everything super sharp, super fine. Uh, but you always have like little bits of parts that are falling off all, this, all the time. And you, I mean, you just glue them. It's not a really big deal. But this kit, I mean, you just don't really have that. I haven't experienced that yet. Everything's really solid. And you have a lot of these really tiny parts in there, but everything fits together so well. And you can move stuff around and it's not like disintegrating in your hand. And it's just awesome. It's just a really uh, great experience of a kit. I would highly recommend it. These kits are a little bit more expensive. They're not cheap. But I would say, you guys, if you if you can, find one that is a design that you like. And I would highly recommend checking one out. So that said, let's take a look at this kit in some more detail. Again, this is the AIS color version, so it's going to be a little bit different um, than the regular stylet kits. Don't know if I like am in love with this particular design enough that I'm going to want to buy just the regular blue uh, stylet kit at, at that point. I don't think I'm like about to go drop like... $300 to buy like a, a bunch more of these frame on girls kits. I'm gonna I have plans to get maybe a, a couple more But I'm not like super crazy gonna be into collecting them yet at this point One thing that's great about them is they are very uh, Customizable and you're able to mix and match a lot of parts with a bunch of the kits because they're all kind of using the same sort of uh, essential base parts, I guess you could say so like whether you want to mix and match heads, hairstyles, uh, accessories, uh, limb parts, I mean that would basically just kind of be the accessories, but some of the limbs are like specific. It's like, for example, like the forearms of this kit are going to be different from the forearms of a, of a different frame arms girl kit. But uh, yeah, the ability to mix and match and parts and weapons and all of that stuff is fantastic as well. Being able to use all of like the frame arms, actual, the actual robots. Uh, using all of their weapons and stuff, using actual parts from those kits as well on these as, as well. It's, it's a really cool aspect. Um, so there's a lot of hard points throughout the kit. Um, you, they're, most of them are covered up at, at this point because they've got uh, pieces plugged in there, but all the hard points on there are all in the same universal size. So stuff from the Frame Arms kits can be used with the Frame Arms Girls kits, and they're all just using the same uh, plug size, so those can be mixed and matched. Uh, as you like so really fantastic kit i uh, just yeah uh, had a really great experience with this so far so let me just show you guys at first uh some of the other stuff that this kit comes with it does come with a good amount of stuff i found it's not like uh what you actually get in the box i was just talking a minute ago about the ability for customizing uh, and with different things what you get in this box you get a fair amount of stuff uh, weapons and accessories But if you really want to do a whole lot of customizing with different uh, armor and different weapons and things like that You're gonna have to get more of the series uh, So what you actually get in one box is not going to give you a whole lot of options But you do have some I think this particular version probably has more options than others which is nice, which is one of the reasons why I got it. But just a reminder here, you do get a set of water slide decals. So you can see we have water slides for the eyes, a whole bunch of nice white markings around there, and then blue stripes for the panties. But as you can see, of course, on the kit already, we have the eyes and mouth pre-printed on this particular face. There's not really much of a mouth there, but on the other ones, you can see the mouth a little bit more easier. Uh, but that's already pre-painted on there, and it looks fantastic. So the only reason you would really need to use the water slides is if you wanted to change the skin tone uh, of the figure. I guess if you like paint the rest of the other parts where the skin is showing. If you paint that all in some different color to change the skin tone, you're going to need to paint the face as well. Otherwise, it's going to be looking a little bit strange, maybe. 
And in which case you would have to reapply the eyes using the water slide decal. So that's one reason why you might have to use those. Otherwise, we do have some other face options aside from this kind of neutral one. We have this sort of side grin one. We have this looking straight grinning face. And then this sort of angry attacking kind of face. And then we have a whole bunch of hand options for the kits. Uh, you can see that they're just all in black on the kit. Now I have just the kind of resting open hands. You also have a set of left and right just kind of open, expressive open hands. You have a set of just plain closed fists for the left and right. We have these kind of pointing holding hands. You could use this as just like pointing a finger, but I think it's actually more so meant for like holding a sword like or something at an extreme angle, or I guess like a weapon where it's like a trigger finger, I guess. I don't really know uh, what that's supposed to be, but whatever you need it to be is what it can be. And then finally, just a regular set of open hands, uh, holding hands, I should say. So these would be, I guess, the ones that you maybe would use for like a sword or something. And then the other ones, I guess, used for trigger finger hands or again, just whatever you need, whatever the weapon is, uh, the grip that you're using. And while we're on the subject, here's a couple of the extra parts that you get with this kit. They're just uh, weapon handles. So if you have like some uh, other Kotobukiya, like frame arms, uh, weapons that you want to use with this kit. Uh, you get to have a couple of these handles here that you can use for that. I think that's what these are included for anyway. So these again are just using the same universal uh, plug size so you can just plug these into anywhere uh, we're able to do that onto the weapon. And then this knife here is actually listed as a uh, extra part that you're not supposed to use with this kit. Uh, but of course you can use it if you want or just give this to a different kit or whatever. And then we have this cool little set of missiles, which will just plug onto the back of the arm. So this connection uh, will fit onto, again, just kind of wherever you want to plug that onto a kit, but it's specifically formed to shape to fit onto the back of the arm of this kit. And then we have our Gatling guns. This one is just meant to just be held, uh, handheld. It doesn't have any plug to like plug this onto the back of the arm or something. I kind of wish that it did have some way to plug into the back of the arm because I'm not sure how stable that's going to be just being handheld like that. Uh, we'll test it out here in a minute, but you can see it's a nice uh, six barrel Gatling gun here. Not really a whole lot going on. You can see there's another hole on the side of this as well. So you can plug on some other option parts if you wanted to plug a, like another ammo drum or something onto the side of here or kind of other targeting camera or something like that. Whatever you wanted to do, you can customize this some more. That's kind of the thing with these is they're meant to be highly customizable. And then here we have a set of Japanese swords. Now this set is actually, you're able to buy this just on its own as a MSG uh, weapon, a modeling support goods uh, option weapon. So you can buy this and I actually have a, a set that I bought actually for a different kit. Uh, but it's just a longer sword and a shorter sword and you have this uh, little uh, connection, connection piece there, which you can use as you like. Those just fit into there. So you can adjust the connection as you like. And then there's a peg there for plugging it onto the actual robot. You also have this connection piece here for if you wanted to connect just a single sword instead of both of them, you can do that, just use one instead. As for the actual sword, when you pull this out, it's actually just the handle. The actual sword blade isn't in there. That's just for the look, just for the effect. The swords are actually their own separate pieces where they're just molded just as one uh, solid piece here. So you have the longer one and the shorter one. Really nice. I like the look of these uh, quite a bit. They're just simple, basic swords, slightly curved but a nice looking, just kind of Japanese swords. And then our only other option parts here is this option leg, which is sort of like uh, meant to look like it's sort of like taking off some of the armor there. So that's like some of the foot armor sort of like coming off and then the option arm to go along with that as well. So it's just kind of look like it's just kind of bare without the armor and it looks like like this in use it's just supposed to look like that it's kind of a cool thing again i think all of the frame arms girls kits have that half of those parts included i could be wrong at least all the main ones i think maybe not the architect ones or not the like architect frame ones i could be wrong but uh yeah i know that's been at least in a lot of the kits one other thing too that i should mention while we're here is that this uh the ais color it actually comes from fantasy star online too so this is sort of like a cross-promotion thing. And Kotobukiya also makes this particular robot from the game. Uh, and you can actually buy that separately, but it's just in the same colors. And so that's where the color scheme and the name comes for this particular Frame Arms Grill kit. So I guess the last thing to talk about there is just the base that you see it standing on. It's just a very small, simple base with a ball joint at the top and a ball joint at the bottom of this long rod here. 
So you, it's actually quite versatile in how you can pose that. That just plugs onto the back skirt, I guess that's very much exactly what it is in this case. Okay, so let's just now take a look at some of the articulation of the kit, where things move around and some of the uh, up close details and everything. One thing I forgot to mention before when talking about the eyes, I wanted to mention about the pre-painted uh, turquoise blue here on the side of the legs, on the stomach and breastplate there. There is a little bit of pre-painted, nice uh, bright turquoise blue there. As for the head, I love that little white bar that's going there underneath the chin as well. It's a cool design feature. The head will go up and down, so some nice articulation there. Of course, side to side as well. Just be careful with those little hair parts because they are really fine. Here on the back of the head, these really super long and thin uh, pigtails. What are they? I don't know. Uh, but those are on a ball joint there at the base, and so you can move those around as you like as well. This kind of backpack jet engine thing here can also move up and down a little bit, not a whole lot of articulation there, and well, there's not really a whole lot of room for it to go uh, anywhere, but that does move up and down if you need. Here on the side of the arm, these wings will rotate back and forth, and if you just take those off, here you can see it's just another uh, hard point where you could plug in something else if you wanted to plug in like a missile pod or something else there onto the side of the arm, or your swords, for example. The arm itself will move up at the shoulder. You gotta kind of be careful because of that big fin there on the side that kind of gets in the way, but you can move it up to about 90 degrees. I think you could probably move that up more if you didn't have this big fin on the top of there, but that's kind of getting in the way of that movement. Otherwise, we have some rotation there at the top of the arm and just a single joint there in the elbow, but you are able to get more than 90 degrees there. Another hard point here on the back of the arm, that's where you're gonna plug on the missiles or again, kind of whatever you want. And then the hands are just on a ball joint there, so you can move those around as you need. This front breastplate actually is able to move up and down. Uh, not really, doesn't really serve any purpose, but uh, that does move if you need. And then behind there, you also have some articulation uh, be between like the chest and the stomach section. There's some movement there and rotation side to side. On the front skirt, well, not technically to the skirt yet, but on this front part, these little tiny wings here on the side of this kind of front crotch part, those will move a tiny bit as well. It can't really even notice it that much, but those do kind of turn a little bit. You have a seam line right down the middle of this kind of front crotch part there, so you'll have to wipe out that seam line. Overall though, not too many seam lines. Kotobukiya kits do tend to have more seam lines than Bandai kits just in general, unfortunately, but it's just kind of the trade-off you get with them. Uh, then the actual skirt parts do move. You have like one, two, three, four sections on each side of that, so that can move quite well, so you can move those parts around and out of the way and all of that. Again, on the back skirt, if you aren't gonna plug this onto the base, you can plug something else onto there, again, like an ammo drum or whatever you wanted to plug onto the back uh, to customize that, you can use that if you want. At the hips, you can get the legs to go to about that far, I think, is gonna be about the uh, full extent of that. If you remove this armor section on the side of the leg, you can see we have another hard point here for plugging on something. Seam line down the side of the thigh, you'd have to get rid of that if you, if you cared about it looking like a normal skin flesh. The whole leg can come forward to just about 90 degrees perpendicular to the body and then uh, double bend at the knee here to give you a nice full 180 degrees, that's nice. The knee armor is kind of separate and you can see it kind of comes out like that, it's kind of interesting, but it doesn't move together with anything so you kind of have to just do it manually like that which is kind of weird but it is there I guess anyway. And then like with the arms, the fin on the side of the leg can be rotated or removed and here you have another hard point. And then on the back of the leg, another hard point here as well. And then finally getting down to these tiny little feet here, some nice detail up underneath and the front part is able to move side to side for getting a wider stance. Can't really move it forward all that much but you can point the whole foot down like so. And then this kind of wheel that's up underneath there, you can rotate that uh, back if you wanted to have that rotated like that. So just to give you a look at these parts in action, the kind of bare arm and leg parts. Very cool, I like this. It's a really cool, interesting look for that. So it's a nice option to be able to have in here. I wouldn't say that I would like to have that like for both arms and both legs. I think it, it works really well just as it is, just half like that. So just kind of like half off of this part like that. It just makes it look even more kind of interesting or cool. Something, I don't know, it just gives it some more character, I think, so I like that. I'm glad that we had those parts included. So as you guys can no doubt tell, I really like this kit a lot, and I'm gonna have to highly suggest you guys to check out a Frame Arms Girl kit if you haven't yet. There's a lot out there to choose from. 
and a lot of different like color variations of them as well so I mean there's a wide range to choose from and they are a little bit more expensive but I can say now that I built one I do think that they're worth it basically it's like a really small master grade kit so it's about the same price point they're usually around around 35 to 45 even up to 50 dollars for some of them but uh, consider it sort of on the level of a master grade in terms of the intricacy. It doesn't really have a lot of like the inner frame, of course, but it has a lot of really small parts. So that's another thing too. I wouldn't really recommend these kits for beginners. You'd probably be fine, but just keep in mind there are a lot of really small parts. And if you've never built a Kotobukiya kit too, uh, the instructions are just a little bit different from Bandai's. So you just have to really pay close attention to what parts are going where, just making sure that you're putting stuff together in the correct way. I think it's it's one of those things if you have stuff if you have something put together incorrectly you're probably going to notice it but um, I would definitely not recommend this for like your first kit ever to build but as long as you've built a couple kits even if you just build a couple high grade kits or something like that and you wanted to give this a try you'll be fine just uh, give it a go. One thing that I will say about this particular kit, the Gatling gun, holding on to the handle for the Gatling gun is a little bit annoying. I think I might try switching that to a different handle uh, and maybe holding it in a, a different way. Maybe the extra handle that was included with the kit, maybe I'll switch it out uh, and use that in, in like a different way because it's just a little bit awkward to kind of hold that in the hand uh, as I was worried about the connection of that with it having no other connection to the side of the arm or the underside of the arm or anything. Uh, it's just a bit odd, a bit goofy. It looks okay and you can make it work, but um, th that was a little bit, that's really the only issue that I've had at all with the kit and like trying to pose it. Uh, again, there's some seam lines on there that you'll have to take care of. That's vague, slightly annoying, but really not a big deal. Overall, really happy with this kit. It was a really fun experience building it and I'm looking forward to checking out some more in the future. So with that guys, thank you so much for uh, watching. Hopefully this was cool. Hopefully some of you guys who have been waiting for me to review a Frame Arms Girl kit, uh, hopefully you're pleased with uh, this review and uh, looking forward to some more in the future. In the meantime, guys, if you have any other questions or comments about this, leave that down below. I bought this from Hobby Link Japan. I'm sure you can buy it from a lot of different sources, so just shop around if you're looking for this particular one or other Frame Arms Girl kits. And as always, guys, hope you're having a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.